We definitely in our home, and I'm, I'm not a trained psychologist, but we do colloquially call what we experience PTSD. I mean, I relive these seizures over and over again. The first one where I was right with my son, we were watching, uh, we'd watched a football game and we were playing in our front room. And I can still see it. We were playing in our front room and he, he was getting really excited and really happy. And you know, with most kids, that's, that's great. You, you encourage that. And I was encouraging it. And all of a sudden he kind of had his arms out and he just kind of starts wobbling. And I, I think I could visually, like a tape recorder, if you could see my mind's eye, you could see the vast majority of his seizures when they started that I was present for. And I, I relive these moments a lot and I think that does add to the stress mm -hmm. because I see something that looks like it, mm -hmm. right? Or I see, or I question, was it because I was letting him get amped up and play? Was that what caused the seizure? So now I'm scared to let him get amped up and play and get all excited. And that's, that's been a real tension. And then there's the other side of this that I don't know if anybody has talked about, but SUDEP is constantly on our minds because our son does have nocturnal seizures and it's every single night. Mm -hmm. And so you live in this constant state of like PTSD and fear. Mm -hmm. Like I can be driving down the road and be nowhere near my home, but if I hear an ambulance in my head, I'm thinking they're going to my house. It's totally irrational. And I know that it's not happening, mm -hmm. but there's that split second where you know, oh my gosh, they're coming to us. Like I had a moment two nights ago where I woke up out of a dead sleep. I don't know what woke me up and the SAMI monitor was out. And I was like, oh my God, it, it turned off. Mm -hmm. And I woke up and I cursed and I got out of bed and my husband said, what is the matter? And I'm like, the monitor's not on. And he said, Lauren, Finn's in bed with us. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't even realize that he had gotten up to bring him into bed. My instinct was to panic because I can't see him on that screen. Mm -hmm. And you live with that every single, there is no like downtime to that level of stress mm -hmm. and that level of grief. Mm -hmm. I feel like it hits you out of the blue and I feel like you're constantly ready for the next seizure. Um, I'm a, a veteran also, and I'm, I'm a combat veteran, okay, cool. and and I liken it, uh, PTSD and all that, to taking care of Sydney, mm -hmm. because when but there's there's one respect is when you go into a combat situation, you do what you got to do, and you come out, it's done, mm -hmm. it's never done for us. Mm -hmm. We're always in the back of our head. We're always waiting for that phone call. We're always waiting for that thing to drop and then for that bad call. It's never gone, and that's the difference. Never it's over. never over, never. And you know, uh, the, the the places we've had seizures, and the mm -hmm. the heartbreak and the worry of being in that situation again, and maybe not being close enough to to getting help, mm -hmm. or you know, these when we talk about fears, those are some of my biggest fears that I'm going to be in a place and I don't know how to get help. My mm -hmm. cell phone's not going to work. What am I going to do? And that PTSD is so real. But when I go to get mental health help, mm -hmm. it's not understood at the same yeah. rate. Yeah, I saw a psychologist a number of years back. Um, and, you know, when I walked in there, I was expecting to hear certain diagnosis. But then there was one thing that she said that I had never heard of before that day. You know, I was given the PTSD, anxiety, depression. And then she said, compassion fatigue. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that should be talked about more. Um, because like I said, I never heard of compassion fatigue. And, but when I read up on it, I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, this is yeah. me. This is what I'm dealing with, yeah. Compassion fatigue. Yeah, can you say a little more about that? I think that's a really good thing to yeah. introduce. I don't know if I can effectively <laughs> explain it um, very well, but it's, it's basically just this idea that we are in this situation. We can't get out. We have to, you know, we care for our children. We want them to do well. Um, so every day we're in there, we're putting in 100%, um, you know, just 
trying to survive, trying to get them through, and we become fatigued. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's no way to fix it, right. yeah. really. There's when no, do I get a break? Yeah, right. You know, we never get a break. You know, even here, our daughter is home with a nurse. She's always still in the back of our heads. You know, when are we going to yeah. get that phone call or a bad phone call or whatever? Mm -hmm. And we never get a break. Yeah. And I'm just like not trying to scare people who have their mm -hmm. children having their first diagnosis <laughs> of this. No, I, but it, it's hard not to. I mean, it, this is what the reality. Yeah, this is what you yeah, have to always. expect. I don't want to, you know, put you know rainbows on everything because yes, you experience so many great things. Sure. Because I think she's made me a better person because mm -hmm. I didn't know what real love or caring was for until she came along. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. yeah I, I think it's you know, we all have those thoughts and our, our brains go to those places. And I think just hearing other people say, yeah, I've thought this too, or mm -hmm. I get tired sometimes too, is, is very, very powerful. Yeah. So I, I don't, um, I think it's, it's important and it's brave to be able to, to say those things mm -hmm. and to, yeah. to share those things. It really is.